Hi, and thanks for joining with me again today. Today I want to talk to you about a much more recent development in spiritual thought and religious history. And that is the beginnings of, and just a, a small portion of the teachings of a movement called Christian Science. And more about that title in just a moment, because it is very often misunderstood. It is the name of a religious movement and a, an actual denomination, primarily in the United States, but with sections all over the world. The founder of this religious movement was a woman in the United States named Mary Baker Eddy. And her years are from 1821 till 1910. And the official name of the church that she founded is the Church of Christ scientist, the Church of Christ scientist. And the actual church itself was founded in 1879. She also was the founder of something you might be familiar with, a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, newspaper that she founded in 1908 that was called the Christian Science monitor and is still uh, being published to this day. Eddie herself was named one of the hundred most significant Americans of all time. That was in 1914 by Smithsonian Magazine, by the Smithsonian Institute. And her main book, the primary text other than scripture of the faith is called Science and Health with Key to the Scripture. And it was ranked um, one of the 75 books by women whose words have changed the world. And that was by the Women's National Book Association. And so this is the, um, the text, and it is available uh, today, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. And this is primarily um, the text of her teaching. Now, how the transformation of Mary Baker Eddy came about uh, was uh, slow. I, I suppose you would say it was slow. She was the youngest of six children. Her background in New England was Congregationalist. And I'll be doing one of these days a video about Congregationalism and that movement. She was often sick as a child and seems to have suffered from some type of eating disorder. She had chronic indigestion as a child. She was received into the congregational denomination, but she objected strongly to the idea of predestination, which is a basic Calvinist, Presbyterian, and therefore a congregationalist belief at the time, and also eternal damnation. She did not believe in hell. She was married three times. Two of her husbands died, and one she was divorced from, and she had one child, a son. On February 1st, 1866, she slipped and fell on ice 
while walking in Lynn, Massachusetts, causing a spiral injury. I'm sorry, a spinal injury. On the, on the um, third day after that, being bedridden, uh, she called for her Bible and opened it at Matthew 9, 2. And of course, the Bible she had at the time was the King James. And she read, and behold, they brought to him a man sick with a palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins are forgiven thee. And she writes, as I read, the healing truth dawned upon my sense, and the result was that I arose, dressed myself, and ever after was in better health than I had enjoyed before. That short experience included a glimpse of the great fact that I have since tried to make plain to others, namely, life in and of spirit, this life being the sole reality of existence. And then she uh, spent the next three years of her life in biblical study of, of finding uh, in greater detail this discovery that she went on to call Christian science. This is something that she says is in the scripture and she discovered it. She became convinced that illness could be healed through an awakened thought brought on by a clearer perception of God. So what you may know about Christian science is that it is a denomination of Christians uh, following the Christian God who emphasize healing very much. So after having her own healing experience and studying the scriptures carefully for actually the rest of her life, Mrs. Eddy began to heal others and then she began to teach other people who were interested in healing in this way to pray effectively for healing. She saw this as the mission that Jesus had given to the church. He sent his disciples out to heal the sick and to release those who were oppressed. And she saw that this ministry was missing in the church of her day. And she sought to restore Christianity to the original directions of Jesus, to go forth and to heal. And she saw this healing as the evidence that you were on the right track spiritually, that you understood the spirit spiritual way that Jesus had healed. You were, in fact, becoming Christ-like, and this was the evidence of that. Now, this form of teaching was metaphysical, and therefore it was rejected by much of, well, I would say by all of the mainstream church. That did not, however, deter her, and she continued her work. It expanded. As a form of mysticism, or metaphysics, I suppose we should say, Mrs. Eddy's work contained a number of similarities to Hinduism. And in her earlier editions, she admitted the harmony between Christian science and Vedantic philosophy, and even quoted from Hindu writings. But after the 34th edition, 
these quotations had been removed. There is also a quote, uh, this is from Damodar Singhal, who says the Christian science movement in America was possibly influenced by India. The founder of this movement, Mary Baker Eddy, in common with the Vedantins, believed that matter and suffering were unreal and that a full realization of this fact is essential for relief from ills and pains. The Christian science doctrine has naturally been given a Christian framework, but the echoes of Vedanta in its literature are often striking. There's also been controversy, which you may have heard, about whether Christian scientists are allowed to go to doctors. They believe in spiritual healing through prayer. But I can assure you that Christian scientists are allowed to go to doctors and even are encouraged to do so if their illness is such that they are unable to cure themselves or with the help of a practitioner, a Christian science healer, and especially if the illness is life-threatening. Christian science um, heals through prayer, through identification, with Jesus and the way he prayed. And so while they do not have pastors or priests in their religion, they have what are called practitioners. And these are people who have been trained especially to help people in prayer, to support them in prayer. Practitioners charge for their service, but they are um, not allowed to have any secular employment in addition to being a practitioner. If they've chosen to be a practitioner, this is their source of income. Sometimes people in Christian communities don't understand that because their pastors or their priests pray for them without charge. But the difference is that the pastor or the priest is already supported by the church. And this is just one of their functions. A practitioner receives no money from the Christian science church. And this is the source of their income. There are also people trained as Christian science nurses, and these people care for the sick. And they do things like help the elderly or the ill with cleansing or changing of bandages or dressings or helping uh, prepare their food for them. And they have been trained by the Christian science religion to function in this helpful way for people who are struggling with illness. As I mentioned just a moment ago, there are no ministers or priests in this branch of Christianity. So what happens in a worship service? The leaders of the service are readers. Uh, there are two of them called the first reader and the second reader. There are no sermons in Christian science worship. There are readings, first from scripture and secondly from the textbook Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. 
Mrs. Eddy did not want her teachings to be changed or diluted in any way. And so in that particular denomination, people do not uh, take what she has written or the scripture and add to it their own opinions. And she believed this would keep the teaching pure. Another thing that Christian scientists have that you may have come across and wondered what they were, in many cities they have what are called reading rooms. And these are places where the public is invited to come in. Uh, there are books there, Christian science books, primarily the science and health book, but also some magazines which they publish, the Christian Science Sentinel, the Christian Science Journal, other writings by Mary Baker Eddy, hymn books. Uh, these things are there for purchase, or you may just come and sit in a reading room and pray. There is always someone there to help you find what you're looking for. So you may read their words or purchase them for yourself. And there are still reading rooms today. Many in larger cities are open uh, with a regular business hours. Some in smaller towns and cities as a separate room in the church it is only opened maybe once or twice during the week. Well, let me give you just one or two quotes from her text to give you a flavor. And these are from chapter 14, which is called Recapitulation. After almost 500 pages of teachings, this is a review and question and answer form. What is God? Answer. God is the incorporeal, divine, supreme, infinite. Now these words are capitalized. Mind, spirit, soul, principle, life, truth, love. Are these terms synonymous? They are. They refer to one absolute God. Is there more than one God or principle? There is not. What is error? The answer, error is a supposition that pleasure and pain, that intelligence, substance, life are existent in matter. Error is neither mind nor one of mind's faculties. That is mind with a capital M. They, they are not um, error is not of God, nor one of God's faculties. Error is the contradiction of the truth. And so uh, Mrs. Eddy in her Christian science teaches that God is truth with a capital T. And much of our human thinking is in error. And I'll just read one additional excerpt. Does Christian science or metaphysical healing include medication, material hygiene, mesmerism, that is a kind of mind control, hypnotism, theosophy or spiritualism? Answer, not one of them is included in it. In divine science, the supposed laws of matter yield to the law of mind, capital M for mind, so that there is a spiritual law that supersedes any law that we might consider the natural or physical laws of our world. And I quote again, what are term natural science and material laws are the objective states of mortal mind. Remember, uh, God is mind with capital M. Our thinking is referred to as mortal mind. 
the physical universe expresses the conscious and unconscious thoughts of mortals. Physical force and mortal mind are one. Drugs and hygiene oppose the supremacy of the divine mind. Drugs and inner matter are unconscious, mindless. Certain results supposed to proceed from drugs are really caused by the faith in them, which the false human consciousness is educated to feel. Science, with a capital S, must triumph over material sense and truth over error, thus putting an end to the hypotheses involved in all false theories and practices. So that gives you a bit of flavor of that movement. And of course, additional information is available online. Just do a search for the Christian Ch uh, Science Church or Mary Baker Eddy, and it will lead you to all of their available resources. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this short look into another movement of faith and spirituality. And next time, I will um, do my best to bring to you another ancient or modern spiritual movement. I try to upload on Saturdays, and I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in learning about these different groups and some of their teachings and ways of doing things. And I want to thank every person who's been watching. Thank you for your support. And thank you for subscribing and liking the videos. I invite you, of course, to put your comments and questions and suggestions for groups or movements that you might like to learn about. In the meantime, have a great week. Stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you soon.